Good morning. How's everyone? Hello. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give it a few more minutes. Uh, hopefully, we get a little bit more people. So I posted the, I posted the meeting notes on the chat. So if uh, if you can just add yourself as an attendee. All right, we, we got like uh, six people. So hopefully some other people will join later. Uh, so we got uh, Tom and Gianluca. Uh, you guys are gonna present uh, Packet. Uh, sorry, you're from Packet and you're gonna be presenting Tinkerbell. So yeah, just take it away. And, You're muted, Tom. I'm unmuted now. <laughs> hey, thanks for having us. We are uh, here to talk about uh, Tinkerbell. It's an open source project that we're building at Packet and trying to engage the community in um, that takes care of all the automating and management of uh, bare metal servers, takes care of provisioning. And I think John Luca is going to go a little bit more in depth and show off some, some of the cool power that Tinkerbell brings. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's mainly like uh, you know, I I joined Packet like few months few months ago, and it was mainly you know my thinking was like when you get a server, what do you do with it when it comes? You know, you like you take it out from from the box, and how do you make it to do something useful? And uh, yeah, Tinkerbell tries to to answer this question uh, and. Uh, giving to the user the flexibility to uh, to do whatever they want with the in terms of like installing the operating system and running actions um, from having like a, a server that doesn't do anything until it it runs like a cloud image that we all know coming from like you know Ubuntu or uh, AWS or any other cloud provider so the idea is to is to close the gap between like a new fresh server that you get from a, from a shop and like the cloud, let's say. Um, the way we do it like is via API because that's what, that's what we learn like in, the, in our cloud native like journey. And um, yeah, let me share my screen and see. Like if you have any, I know, if you had a look at it and you have any question, you can just stop me. Otherwise I, I'm trying to I will start from the documentation and share a little bit what we we 
we did so far. So as Tom said, it's an open source project, so it, it has its, its home on GitHub. And it's made of like microservices or services, call them like what you want. And the, the think one is the, is the main one. And it contains like, it provides the, the CLI and the think server. The think server uh, is the equivalent of like a control plan um, in, in the Kubernetes land. It's the, it's the after that receive the requests, store them, and you know serve them to the worker and the worker are like your server so usually when you have a worker uh, it boots when, when you have a server like you you power it you power it on and it starts and the boot starts uh, nowadays all the servers supports like network booting that is uh, the technology is the is the is pixie and we use we leverage that as uh, to serve our base operating system uh, the base operating system we serve via netboot via IPXE uh, is called OZI and is uh, it is like available open source as a project as well. So the first stuff you you see when you start like a worker uh, is like OZI itself. I can find it here. Yeah, uh, and it is an in-memory operating system based on Alpine. So you like the server goes on and it makes like a DHCP request asking for, you know, a peer. And uh, Tinkerbell serves um, DHCP servers that is called Booth and that is available as well as a open source project. And what Booth does, it, it responds with the OZ um, operating system. So in this way, the operating system starts on RAM and it's available. So it gives you a shell that you can use. Uh, inside OZ, there is Docker that we use Docker as a runtime. And as you can see the, in the documentation, in practice, what you do is like you specify uh, a template and you transform the template into a workflow. So the, ten, the, plan, the template is, a YML, is in the YAML format here. And as you can see, it recalls a little bit like Docker itself because it, it used like the image. So in, what, what we are saying here is like, uh, worker with the MAC address uh, execute the the workflow from the template. This template, this template here. I, and uh, in yeah, worker. So yeah, can you make the screen a little bit larger? And, sure. Yeah, and then I have a question. So uh, do you uh, have a like an architecture diagram somewhere in the document? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have it. I just remember where it is. But I, I didn't want to break your workflow, but uh, you know. <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you. Um, yeah. So as you can see, like this is the the architecture. So there is the control server that is the provisioner itself, and it's the Think server. So the Think servers provide gRPC and HTTP API, and it contains like the the server contains all the workflows. It stores all the um, uh, hardware. Uh, representation so you can register your hardware inside the server and you start the templates via the CLI. Um, when when the worker starts as, as I said like it takes it makes a DHCP request it, re it the DHCP responds and it starts uh, via IPC the OZ operating system that is an Alpine. Inside the Alpine there is Docker and from there uh, the worker is able to execute every task that you ask it for. Um, one of the one of the tasks we have is the hello world one that we saw in the documentation, but it's not super like fun. The another one we have is called um, Tinkerbell Ubuntu, and in practice brings you to a fully persisted and working uh, Ubuntu operating system. Um, and as you can see, like you have the Ubuntu template that is the same that we saw before. It's a YAML file that describes uh, all the steps and the actions that has to be done. So the first stuff you have to do when you uh, install a new operating system inside, inside a server is, is to wipe the disk. So there is an action that like uh, wipe the disk. There is another one that makes the partition because we have to partition disks and like set up the 
the swap or the home directory and where the operating system is. Um, you have to install the root of, uh, file system and configure the grub and uh, start the cloud unit. But that's almost what happens when you install like every operating system. And if you want to know what like each of those actions does, um, you can follow the foldering and as you, as I will show you, like every, every uh, action is a, is a Docker container. And the Docker container can be as complicated or simple as you want. So the wipe um, action is uh, executing a bash script and the bash script is way more complicated, but what it does, like it's, it wipes the disks. So it, it erases all the data and it prepares um, the, the AFI bootloader for the operating system itself. And I mean, this is like in, in the high level, like very high level, how, um, how Tinkerbell as a whole project works. And if you have a look at the repositories we have, you can figure out how we kind of uh, like split the responsibility of the project itself, because in the ID, you can use a different like in-memory operating system if you have your own one. So you don't need to be, you, you don't need to, to use OZ. You, you can use your own one technically. So that's why it has its own repository with, with its own, uh, we're building release life cycle for every project and so on. The, the Hegel uh, repository is, it serves metadata. So when, if you're used to like, we are all used to cloud computing. So we know that we can call like an IP from inside the server and it responds with like, the metadata of the machine itself. And this is what we do. Uh, with that microservice. Um, and it, it is available for every like machine you start with Tinkerbell. Uh, Boot as a, is, the, like, is the first uh, interaction uh, like a server has, and it, it is a DHCP server. Um, we leverage, like as I said, like Pixie, Pixie Boot. So we do net booting and that's how it works. You, like the, the machine starts, it has for that an address and it gets the address and an operating system, um, a temporary operating system. We also have like microservice, a microservice that help us to uh, manage BMC, to interact with, B with BMC. Uh, so we can like switch on and off like machine uh, programmatically. We, are, uh, we started to build a, U uh, a UI, a graphical UI. Um, so there is a portal and yeah, we are collecting workflows now and we are trying to, to figure out how to make them reusable uh, in a good way. Luckily for us, we decided to use like um, OCI and Docker images. So technically we can use like a, a doc. I have a, I have a question. So the OC is just an in-memory operating system, but that that's uh, not the operating system that is running on the machine, right? So that's... No, that's yeah, that, you're right. We use that operating system only like as a first way to run actions on the server. So as soon as you, uh, as soon as the, as soon as Tinkerbell workflow wipe the disk, install the Ubuntu operating system, uh, we configure the grab. So the, the, the grab will, uh, switch the booth from the networking one to the disk one. So from there, uh, you start from your disk that has Ubuntu or like Debian or uh, um, whatever. And like OZ is not used anymore because it, run, it was running on RAM. So it just doesn't exist anymore. Got it. I, are you integrated with Kubernetes in any way? So I can... We got like a, a lot of uh, requests from like the Cluster API team to get an implementation uh, with it. But uh, right now we are working on like the Tinkerbell core itself. So I think uh, for the next couple of months, we will uh, keep working on like a release life cycle and stability work that we have to do. But the a Cluster API implementation is for sure uh, a priority for us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
other 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 than that, we don't other than Kubernetes, but we hope that with the community to, to build one um, very soon. And yeah, I think I don't have a lot to say more. Tom, I don't know if you have uh, any pointers for us. Let me you're muted. Just that we're really excited about this project and we're looking for more people to get involved. If y'all have any questions, uh, feel free to ask now or you can reach out to us. Both of our emails are in the agenda. I have a question, a couple. Um, the first question, uh -huh. what, what, what database do you support? Um, we use, uh, I think it's written somewhere, but we, have, uh, we use Postgres right now. Uh, so any SQL like support, like, yeah, any SQL is fine. the one we are using at the moment. Got it. And you also mentioned mentioned Docker. Uh, Docker is in a runtime. Uh, so after after the main operating system is installed, uh, uh, does the Docker remain on the host, or is it also temporary, just for delivery bits? Yeah, it's it's temporary only for the uh, for delivering and installing, like to making. all the action on the server but after that thank you you have your operating system of choice without any thank you i think you broke up but i'm not maybe it's my connection but i don't know so, so... so i have a question this is diane Padma. How do you discover what hardware you're provisioning on? I mean, if there are accelerators on it or if there's something unusual about it, like a high-speed networking or something like that, do you have some sort of discovery of what exactly you're provisioning on? Yeah, there are two different ways we currently support. One is that um, every hardware will uh, register itself when uh, we get the first DHCP request. And obviously with that, we don't really get a lot of information about the host. We just know that there is one host that has a MAC address. That's it. Uh, another way is to register in the Tinkerbell server all, all the hardware. And when you register them, you can, it's a JSON that you send and uh, you, can, you can save uh, metadata as a like JSON. So you can uh, mark and label your hardware. Okay, so you've created this list of things that might exist in this metadata format. Is yeah. that also in that in the um, the GitHub repository? Just curious. To see yes. What that look like. it, yeah, it, it is part of the of the Tink repository. Uh, right in the server. I can show you. Um, uh, hey, John Luca, you're breaking up really badly. Do you want to try killing video, maybe? Yeah, let me let me change my connection for one second. I'm back. Let me let me know if you if it works better or not. That's good. Um, Okay, thank you. So this is an example of the hardware data that you can register to Tinkerbell itself. And as you can see, the, the idea is mandatory as, as well as the, um, as the MAC address because we use that as identifier to point workflow to, but you can store like way more stuff. So we store the facility and we store like the, the layout of the storage. Um, and yeah, how do we want the partitioning to be? Uh, yeah, so you can. This is the, the way we we teach like Tinkerbell the how the layout of our hardware. And as I said, if you, it also can be done magically uh, from the the first DHCP request, but obviously you get way less flexibility because there is not much to to, to get from the from the DHCP request. Okay. So they, they specify, whoever is providing the servers specifies it in this way, it doesn't go out and investigate. You don't have a script or something that investigates what hardware you're running on. 
no, no, no. That that okay. part for now it's it, it's free. Or you have to do it. Okay. So like the number of, of CPUs and things like that, and if there's hyper threading and all that, is that can you do that or is that something that you're planning? No, on? for for uh, at the moment there is there is not that part is not uh, made covered by Tinkerbell. We are thinking about an inventory management like uh, solution that will be like I think it will come because we had the same like uh, question you, you raised. Uh, but we, we didn't get that far yet. So it's, it's under discussion. I think we will get at least a prototype that will, uh, I, f I think there is, a there, there is a reconciliation phase that happens uh, when OSI starts that uh, sends a couple of information like this, the, the architecture. And all those information are, are, are coming from OSI because OSI runs Docker and our like worker uh, to uh, demon that sends and reconciles those information. Um, so we have a bit, we have a something, but it's not a fully like uh, an inventory as as we as we usually see. It. But I think we will we will do it at some point. Okay, just curious. It's not an easy problem to solve. There's so much, yeah. so many different <laughs> flavors of hardware out there, and yeah, and so to just do discovery automatically, it can be difficult because you don't know what you're looking for in every case, right? So I think this is a nice approach. You have that. Yeah, we, yeah you're, you're right. It's also, we also took the direction of um, registering, asking for the registration because we don't want for Tinkerbell to take over like all your data center when you start it because it, it, it you know, if you have the, G, the DHCP, every, every, everybody starts to get the response from DHCP from Tinkerbell uh, if you do not segment your, uh, your network. So there is the possibility that if you don't configure it, like if, you, if, if we do auto discovery in a very strong way, like Tinkerbell will start to provision too many stuff. So you say what you want provisioned. Maybe you have an accelerator out there that you don't want to include or something. If you put it here, yeah. then it would be included. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we have those two different and very like uh, far away strategies. You can decide to use Tinkerbell as an in-app discovery mode, or you can register your own, your, your, your own hardware by yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So are you thinking also about uh, maybe uh, making this a CNCF project or are you guys are interested or? So um, as I'm, uh, uh, we've been definitely been in talks with that. Mark Coleman is kind of heading up what that's gonna look like in the long run, but um, that's definitely something of interest. Okay, yeah. And we have a new uh, sandbox uh, process. Uh, I don't, I, I mean, mm -hmm. But, I mean, we have the CNCF has sandbox incubation and graduation, but uh, typically the projects are submitted first to sandbox and then right. they, they stay there for a little while and then and later they want to, you know, become more of a real, you know, project, I guess, that more people are using and uh, but some of the TOC members do a due diligence and then they go into incubation and finally they go into graduation. So, uh, Right. Yeah, we've got a, we're working this quarter heavily on uh, some stability issues, making it tinker, expanding what Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell does, how it works, what it offers, um, as well as, like I said, getting some, some more stability there, um, getting a few things off the, the roadmap into play and into production and, um, then that's something we'll definitely be looking at a little bit more. Yeah. But I know, like I said, um, Mark has, has done a lot of work with uh, CNCF uh, and we have a great relationship with, with CNCF. A lot of the CNCF projects are built on packet. So um, I know we've got, a, we've got a deep relationship with, with the foundation and, and we'll be moving forward, uh, getting Tinkerbell over there as soon as it's ready. 
Yeah, and Alina just posted uh, the link to the Sandbox applications. So, thank you so much, Alina. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, we had we had another project that I present uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, it's called Metal Cube. Uh, are you guys familiar familiar with that project and with how Metal What? Metal Cube, uh, like Metal Three. Um, I am not. Yeah, we, I, I pers I'm personally familiar uh, with we. Yeah. Um, how would you describe think, like uh, like Tinkerbell as a, a? I mean, I think uh, Metal Cube uses Kubernetes, but how would you describe and, and some of the differences and? Yeah, I th I think I'm familiar for what, for what concern our uh, like cluster API implementation because uh, we our the, the packet one is is uh, like new and we obviously had a look at the other implementation, but I don't have like uh, like practical. Uh, I mean, I didn't I didn't try it, so I can't really do a comparison. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's some of the questions that get asked in the TOC sometimes when. Mm -hmm. For example, the projects go into incubation, like how uh, some of these projects are different, because uh, I think a lot of times they kind of just want to fill some gaps or so, for some of these projects that don't exist, and, and maybe they want to promote a certain project in a certain way, like, like okay, this is good for this type of things, right? So so maybe those those are good questions to, to keep in mind, right? So. Absolutely. Yeah, my, I'm also sure that somebody in the company has the answer. We developed the answer already. I'm just not mm -hmm. aware of it. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Anybody has any other questions? Anything that they want to discuss? Well, thank you for the presentation. It was really helpful. Uh, yeah, and I hope, hope uh, you know, this can become a CNCF project in the future. Hey, thanks for having us. We look forward to uh, working with y'all a little more closely once we get this ready to, uh, to roll over into the CNCF. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.